Have you ever wondered why your gaming PC isn't delivering the FPS you expected it to in Warzone? Or have you ever lost a match because your game stuttered and dropped frames? Well, today we're going to look at RAM and how it affects your Warzone performance. And spoiler, it's more than you might think. Also, we're going to take a look at some FPS comparison charts. Uh, we'll answer some common questions like how much RAM do you need? Uh, what's the optimal speed? And is upgrading really worth it? So uh, go ahead and remember to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And let's go ahead and get started. Uh, quickly, let's talk about how much RAM do you need. Fortunately, Warzone does not require more than 16 gigs of RAM for optimal performance. Um, however, in 2023, having 32 gigs can be nice, especially if you're into live streaming, multitasking while gaming, uh, or just to think ahead to future games if they need more. Uh, more important than capacity in this case is how many sticks of RAM should you have? Uh, looking at this graph, you can see there's huge gains or losses to be had here, almost 70 FPS here. Uh, and this is based solely on the amount of RAM sticks and where they're actually placed in the motherboard slots. Uh, we'll go over this graph, but before we do, let me go ahead and explain RAM stick placement. Um, so most motherboards have uh, either two or four memory slots, and you can choose between the single channel or dual channel configurations. Uh, the two slots on the left here are channel A, and the other two on the right are channel B. And how you choose to configure your RAM can make a huge impact on performance. Uh, so let's go ahead and look back at that chart here. Uh, the worst option by far, unfortunately, is a single stick of RAM. So if you have a single stick of RAM, you are going to be limited uh, quite a lot on performance here. Um, just above that, though, is actually if you have two sticks of RAM, but they're placed next to each other in a single channel configuration. Um, Having the extra rank of RAM that helps a bit, you get about 20 FPS, but not anywhere near the performance of having two sticks and dual channel, which gains nearly 50 FPS or 70 from having just a single stick. Um, so that is a really, really huge dump, um, having them you know slotted properly in their respective channels. So if we look back um, at our motherboard here, dual channel, you typically place uh, one RAM stick uh, in the slot furthest from the CPU. So that'd be the one furthest on the right here in this picture. Uh, you would then skip the slot next to it uh, and place the second RAM stick um, in this slot here. And then the fourth RAM slot would be empty. So that would be the proper way to do a, um, a dual channel configuration. Um, but some other boards are a little bit different. So you probably want to consult your manual for uh, specific instructions if you're not sure. Uh, lastly, we do have what's called... Uh, dual channel, dual rank. It's actually, uh, this is when you have four RAM sticks slotted in. Um, in theory, this should provide the best performance, but since my test RAM has decent speeds and timings, uh, their functionality is practically the same um, as just the standard dual channel here. So if you have one stick of RAM, you definitely need to consider uh, getting a matching stick of RAM so you don't leave all that performance on the table. Um, also, Now's the time to double check your own PC. Make sure if you do have two sticks of RAM that they are placed in dual channel mode and not single channel so you get the maximum performance. Um, after that, we're going to go ahead and talk about speed. Uh, finding your current RAM speed is pretty simple. Uh, you go ahead and go to your taskbar down here. You're going to right click and open the task manager. Uh, from here, you're going to click the performance tab at the top and then click the memory tab. Uh, from here, you may have to hit more details down at the bottom, but you should see this little section here that says speed. Mine's currently set at 3600 megahertz uh, because I do have XMP enabled. Um, if this number is lower than what you expected, it's likely that you either haven't uh, enabled XMP if you're on Intel or you haven't uh, enabled DOCP or Expo for AMD. Uh, keep in mind that your RAM's advertised speed won't run automatically most of the time. Um, you actually have to enable it uh, through, like I said, XMP and whatnot. Uh, so from my situation in particular, um, my RAM's XMP is 3,600, 16, 16, 36. Uh, that's my, my current RAM that I have. Uh, but if I don't have XMP enabled, it actually runs at 2133. Um, so you can see in this graph, just making sure I have XMP enabled, I'm getting the speed that I paid for here. I gained 65 FPS, which is about a 28% increase in performance solely just by making sure XMP is enabled. So that's definitely something you're going to want to make sure about. Um, but looking at this graph, you can see Warzone scales pretty well with speed. It's about a 3 to 5% increase in FPS with every single step up in speed. Um, so that's great. 
Uh, so as long as your motherboard and CPU can handle speed, faster is definitely going to be better here. Uh, I'm sure there's a point of diminishing returns in regards to cost per frame, uh, but I didn't test past 4,000. So in my opinion, 3,600 to 4,000 is probably the sweet spot based off the current cost of RAM kits, uh, which a decent 32 gigabyte kit costs around 70 to $100. So prices have really, really gone down for DDR4. Um, up next, we tested RAM timings. Uh, these are the numbers you'll see after the speed rating, which are uh, the speed ratings here. Uh, these are the timings that you'll see when you go to buy, buy RAM kits. Um, I'm not going to delve too deep into what RAM timings are, uh, but just think of them as how fast your RAM can process data, with lower numbers meaning faster performance. Uh, generally speaking, the lower the timings, the more expensive the RAM is going to cost, though. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, as you can see, lower timings definitely do give a better performance. So this is our lowest timing kit here because the, the timing numbers are lower. Um, and it definitely does give a, a bit of a, a performance kick, uh, but not nearly as much um, as a, the RAM speeds that we saw. Um, with RAM speeds, uh, obviously there was a huge increase between those. Uh, keep in mind at lower RAM speeds, so this is at 3600 here. That's what I tested at. Uh, lower RAM speeds like 3200 or 2933, um, those kind of lower RAM speeds, timings are going to matter a bit more. Uh, but right now, we're not really bottlenecked by that. So they don't really seem to be uh, too heavily weighted in performance. Uh, finally, a chart I uh, have here. Um, it's comparing a quite large variety of uh, different speeds and timings. I went and looked up uh, kind of popular speeds and timings and all that kind of stuff for a few different kits. Um so it kind of shows a performance difference in what we saw in the other charts. Uh, but the burning question is, is, is it really worth upgrading? Um, honestly, it just really depends on your situation, your PC, and, and your budget. Uh, if you have a single stick of RAM, I think it's definitely, definitely worth it to upgrade for sure. Um, if you're building a new PC, I think it's worth investing in some decent quality uh, memory or if you currently have a slower than like 3200 megahertz. Uh, and your CPU and motherboard can handle faster, I think it's definitely worth considering. Uh, you can tell here, 3200 really bad timings uh, are are pretty bad in comparison to the, the lower timings here, um, or the lower speed down here. So if you're below the 3200 mark, or like, I mean, even, even decent 3200 is okay. Uh, but if you're below that 3200 mark, it's definitely worth considering getting up into the 3600 to 4000 range as long as your CPU and motherboard can handle it. So definitely something to think about. Um, but that's it for this video. Uh, kind of a short one here. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Check out my settings videos for free FPS boosts. Uh, it should be linked on the screen if you want to catch me live. I stream most days on Twitch, uh, .tv slash Brandon9. You can find me on Twitter with the same handle for updates. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.